Most seniors want private bedrooms, private bathrooms. So these are large luxury upscale homes in really nice parts of town. Um, you, the state only requires, and this is pretty much across all 50 states because we teach nationally, 80 to 100 square feet per person. So you can do it smaller, wow. but wow. that is tiny. And again, we're like, no, 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 no. Do big, do luxury. Like give these seniors the best of the best. You're like the, the mega mogul of assisted living spaces. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. How, how did that all start for you? Yeah, actually, um, my dad was a real estate investor my whole life. And my grandmother needed care and assistance. She fell and broke her arm. And so he was looking for an option for her. And when we toured facilities, he was like, these are terrible. They smell bad. The care is bad. Everything's bad. And they're expensive with waiting lists. So with his real estate background, he was like, wait, I'm going to pay five grand a month for her to be in one of these facilities, or I could own one cash flow, 10 grand a month, and she could live for free. So um, he, she was in upstate New York at the time we went back to Arizona where we live and he actually purchased his first one, the real estate and the business. And I just saw what he was doing. And I'd always been interested in real estate and was like, I want to get involved now. So I um, started working with him. That was about 10 years ago. Since then, we've uh, we have three care homes. We've invested in a bunch across the country and we've trained thousands how to do this as well. So not facilities, but residential homes that house these seniors. And uh, I, I was reading about you on, on your website and, and they were talking about Gene. Is that your father? Gene? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so, so tell me a little bit about your father. Like what, what's he like and you know, how did he get into real estate and all that growing up? He'd been in real estate since he was 18 years old. He was a musician and all sorts of different things throughout his life. Um, but always a real estate investor to the core and he'd done really everything, fix and flip, wholesale, low income, rentals, you know, whatever, you name it. Uh, and then when this came about, he sold everything he did and went all into RAL. He passed in 2021. So all of his businesses went on to me and my siblings, and we've been kind of carrying the torch going forward. So that's another really cool thing is that this is an industry that can easily pass from one generation to the next because it's so passive. We spend five hours a week on the three care homes and they're cash flowing 10 K each. So it's pretty cool because you can not only provide a solution for if anyone in your family ever needs care, you can cash flow and you can pass it to the next generation. So it's kind of that triple threat there. Yeah. I was, I was always interested. As a matter of fact, it was, it's interesting. You said about 10 years ago, probably about 10 years ago, I just remember reading, I've been following Tony Robbins, my whole entire you know, self-improvement life. Yeah. And, uh, and, and yeah, he was, he'd been talking about senior care living, like is going to be, was going to be the next generation of, you know, oh, kind yeah. of investments. And, you know, just simply because between 1946 and 1964, there were 80 million baby boomers that were born. Right. So, you know, it, it's just inevitable that we're going to need these, uh, you know, assisted living situations and, uh, if you could cash flow on it, I mean, it just makes a lot of sense. I mean, are they are they hard? I mean, I know you said five hours a week, but you know, because you're dealing with older people, you're dealing with people that are falling, you're dealing with, you know, obviously you have, you know, uh, nurses and doctors that are taking care of these people, but you know, how how does that all work? Yeah. So it's five hours for the owner operator, right? Cause I'm not living in the home or working in the home, but the licensed administrator is there kind of like as a property manager in the real estate world. And they run all the day to day. So the marketing, the touring, okay. the resident acceptance, they do the hiring and firing of caregivers. If somebody no shows for their shift, they either fill it with someone else or do it themselves. And they are also hiring those licensed caregivers. So no doctors or nurses needed. Instead, it's a licensed administrator and licensed caregivers who are doing all that day to day within the home. And so uh, is that enough? I mean, to take care of like how, how many people are usually living in each house? Yeah. So in a big box facility for perspective, right, there may be 100 to 200. 
250 per building. And the ratios are typically 30 seniors to one caregiver. In our homes, there's six to 16, depending on where you are across the country, you're allowed to have somewhere between that range. Here in Arizona, we're allowed to have 10 in a home. So we have 10 seniors and our ratios are four to one or five to one. So the ratios are so much better and the care then in part is so much better because one person cannot take care of 30 people. That is impossible. It should be illegal and it's not. And that is why when you hear these horror stories over and over and over, it's all about those facilities, never the care homes because our ratios are just so much better. It's so much easier to care for four people than it is for 30, right? That's just impossible. And, and how big are these houses? I mean, what kind of square footage are you? Typically, we at? recommend 300 to 500 square feet per resident. So with 10 residents, minimum 3,000, upwards of 5,000 is very comfortable. Most seniors want private bedrooms, private bathrooms. So these are large luxury upscale homes in really nice parts of town. Um, you, the state only requires, and this is pretty much across all 50 states because we teach nationally, 80 to 100 square feet per person. So you can do it smaller, wow. but wow. that is tiny. And again, we're like, no, 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 no. Do big, do luxury, like give these seniors the best of the best, you know, towards their end of life. So we definitely really push for that high quality experience so that not only are the seniors actually getting what they deserve, but the families are grateful. They're thankful. They're appreciative because you're offering such a great alternative. And for you, you know, doing this over the last 10 years, what's been one of the major challenges for you? You know, staffing and people are always going to be a challenge, right? We do have a massive nurse shortage. And although we don't have nurses in the home, it trickles down, right? If people aren't becoming nurses, they're also not becoming, you know, CNAs or all these other things lesser than a nurse, right? So it's kind of fluid all throughout. And so we're starting to see a lot of trends where people from other countries are coming over to take care of seniors in our community, right? We're currently 1.3 million beds short. Um, so there's not enough beds. There's massive amount of supply, or I'm sorry, massive amount of demand, right? Not enough supply in in housing, but also in care. We don't have enough caregivers. So that is difficult, not just finding them, but training and retaining them and make sure we have the right people in the right seats. If you like this video and you want to watch another one, click right here.